بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وحياكم الله Welcome to the second dars or the second lecture in our study of Usul Sitta and we reach the first principle. We've now finished the introduction and we're going into the first principle from amongst the six principles. And Imam Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, al asl al awwal. He said, the first foundation or the first principle. Ikhlasu deen lillahi ta'ala wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa bayanu diddahu. Alladhi huwa shirk billah. Wa koon akthir al Quran fi bayan hadha al asl. Min wujuhin shatta. Bi kalam yafhamahu abladu al amma. So the Shaykh mentioned, he said the first principle, he said making the religion sincerely for Allah. So the first principle is making the religion sincerely for Allah, the exalted alone, without any associate, uh, associates and clarification of its opposite, which is shirk with Allah. Here, Habitifillah, it's very important that the Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he makes it clear the first principle uh, in his treaties, which basically everyone should know, and that is having sincere sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is ikhlas lillahi ta'ala subhana, and it is making the religion solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah tabarak wa ta'ala alone, without any partners. And part of this usul or this foundation is also, it also entails clarifying that which is the opposite of it. And that's shirk. And we mentioned uh, a statement of the shaykh prior to this, where he said, A'zam ma amar Allahu bihi uh, he said the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with and where did he command us with uh, this principle? Where are we getting this principle? Is it from Muhammad ibn Wahhab? Is it from Wahhabism? Is it from Salafism? If, it, where is it coming from? It's coming from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with Tawheed. He said, so the Shaykh said, bihi huwa tawheed. He said the greatest thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with is Tawheed. And the greatest thing or the most grievous thing he, he prohibited us from, he told us to stay away from, he warned us against is shirk, is worshipping other, uh, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or worshipping someone else or something else along with Allah azza wa jal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi. Verily, Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with him, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he wills. Sheikh Muhammad, a man al Jami, rahimahullah ta'ala, said about this asal. He said, La shak, la yushak ahad. أن كل مسلم يدا يداعي الإخلاص لله تعالى ولكن المهمة تطبيق العمل وهو معرفة الدين ومعرفة العبادة ومعرفة أنواع العبادة ومعرفة الشرك وأنواع الشرك وهذه المعرفة تفصيلية هي التي تنقص كثيرا من العقلاء وأذكياء وإن كانوا عقلاء وإن كانوا أذكياء يفهمون أمور كثيرة في دينهم لكن تنقصهم هذه معلومات تفصيلية في هذا الباب. So the, uh, Sheikh Muhammad 
Aman Ajami Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said that no doubt, or he said that no, no one should doubt, La Yishak Ahad, that every, no one should doubt that every Muslim claims or calls to uh, sincerity to Allah the Almighty. That, that's known from the religion, and that's known uh, even from many people who know very little about Islam, who are not Muslim, they know this. They know that Muslims are monotheistic. They know that Muslims are monotheistic. If they have any uh, basic understanding about Islam, that Muslims, their first pillar is Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. So, Muhammad, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Aman Ajami, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, No doubt to anyone that every Muslim uh, claims or calls, claims to the sin, uh, uh, to ikhlas, to have sincerity to Allah the Almighty. He said, however, the most important thing is the practice uh the, the, the practice in action. He said, Tatbiq al Amali. Practicing in action. Meaning, practicing your, your Tawheed. This is a very powerful statement, and we're going to come back to it. And he said, and then he said, he described what he meant by that. He said, and it is understanding the deen and understanding ibadah. So, understanding the religion of Islam and understanding what ibadah is, uh, what worship is. And knowing the different types of ibadah. Why? Let's go back to what Imam Bukhari said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, in his, in his book in Sahih, in Sahih Bukhari. Mada qal? He said, Bab al ilm qabla al qulli wal amal. He said, The chapter of knowledge precedes uh, actions and statements, or statements and actions. Letting us know. And this is why Sheikh Muhammad Aman Ajami is explaining that it takes ma'rifa, ma'rifa to deen, ma'rifa to ibadah. It takes knowing what the religion is, knowing what Islam is, and knowing what ibadah is. And what shows us, as far as our surroundings, and I'm going to give you in relation to, uh, as I mentioned, a discussion I had with a, an individual recently who's born Muslim and so on and so forth. However, his understanding of Islam is so far from the methodology of the Salaf. Rather, it is so far from Islam in reality. He has many statements without getting into all the details. It's daily when I speak to him, statements of just pure kufr. And I'm not from Ahl Takfir. I don't make Takfir. Anyone who knows me knows I've spent years studying these Messiah of Takfir and you know, am, that I'm Salafi and we are far from this. You know, unless the conditions of takfir are there. And I leave that to the ulama. And what you see is that what is the nux here is that his understanding of Islam is so far wide there's no ma'rif the deen. There's no understanding of the deen. And there's truly no understanding of Tawheed. If he understood Tawheed, he wouldn't say and do the things that he does. And just, you know, make almost everything related to creed, making it halal. I mean, making, uh, you know, having his itaqad, making the haram halal. You see this all the time from many people who, who make the testimony of faith all around the world. So it shows that it's very important, al-ilm, is to have knowledge of Tawheed. That's why we study books like this. That's why we study these basic books to help build our foundation and then get into more in-depth books and treaties and more in-depth messiah and issues. So then he said, and so it takes knowing the deen, knowing what worship is, because you have to know what worship is. If you don't know what worship is, it's too easy to violate worship by committing shirk. If you don't know what Tawheed is, how can you avoid shirk? If you don't know what Tawheed is, how can you correctly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the, your ibadah is based on Tawheed. That it is ifradullah bi ibadah. 
that one of the, the, the types of Tawheed is that you single out Allah alone for Ibadah. And that's what the Shaykh is making is making ishara to. He's pointing out this point. Why? Because he says, And it's knowing or understanding the types of Ibadah, letting us know that there's various types of Ibadah. There is, of course, there's Salat, Zakat, Fasting Ramadan, Hajj, uh, Tawakkul, Tawassal, uh, 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 Toba, uh, Inaba, Isti'ana. All of these are various types of Ibadah. Some of them are Ibadah, Amaliya, or, or uh, physical acts of worship, and some of them are Ibadah, qal Qalbiya. They're Ibadah that is related to the heart. For example, you can't see someone making tawakkal al Allah. You can't judge the extent of what they make tawakkal because the tawakkal is it's it's in the heart. How much they're really putting their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might see physical things that maybe they say, hey, I'm going to travel and I'm putting my trust in Allah and I'm not taking any provisions. Although that is still, that's false. That's not the correct kind of tawakkal. Tawakkal is ittimad al Allah wa fi'la asbab. It is relying solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making efforts to achieve what you're trying to do. So that's what tawakkal is. However, you make you can't make judgments really about someone's tawakkal. You know, it's not a physical, tangible thing. It's a it's an act of the heart. Or you can't you don't know how much someone is trusting in Allah. You don't know how much someone is putting their hope and how much someone fears Allah in their heart. You you can't make those judgments. But we can make general judgments from the Vahir, of course, from what we see in the apparent, and we have to in order to uh, how we interact with one another as believers. So he said, mentioning that there's various types of ibadah, and he said it also entails that this uh, the way you practice this tatbiq al-amali is, is also having knowledge of shirk. What's shirk? You need to know what it is. And the various types of shirk, okay? And he said, and this knowledge is detailed. And it is, a knowledge, it is a detailed knowledge that many people who are intellectual and many people who are very intelligent, that they belittle this knowledge. They, don't, they just say, hey, it's enough. I'm a Muslim. He's a doctor, he's a lawyer, he's a scientist, whatever. And that's beautiful that he's a biologist. It's beautiful that he's doing these things. These are great. A khidma for humanity. It's a service for humanity. It's knowledge that we need, these sciences. But if it comes totally at the expense of the deen, meaning he knows nothing about the deen, but he knows he's very good at, at studying the silverback gorilla. He knows all the details about their 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 the menstruation cycle of the female and how they interact with one another and, and their environment. But that doesn't benefit him nor anyone else in the hereafter. So it's very important that there is, there is some detailed knowledge that we all need. We all need uh, this knowledge of Tawheed. And he said, even if these intellectuals and these uh, intelligent people, they understand, some of them, they understand many things of the religion. Fidinium. They understand there are those who have a lot of knowledge about various issues. I know a particular individual also I interact with regularly who uh, is very strong in the Arabic language. I ask him questions all the time and get help from him about particular issues or, or sentences or translations and things like this. Very strong in, in, in Arabic. Very well read. He's read so much tafsir. You know, because he, since he was a child, he just was into books, and he's very well versed. He can tell you about the different tafsir and their benefits, and he's really into those things. But Aqida in creed, his minhaj, is a, a destructive minhaj. I would just say, I, you can't even begin to. He's so far and in such a dangerous zone between Islam and kufr, in fact, because the way he exalts and some of the statements he's made regarding the divine text or regarding the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, just totally using the intellect, the, like the Mu'tazila and these early groups. So you go so far away. Why? Because that knowledge, tafsiliya, the intricate knowledge of Tawheed is not there. He knows many things about other things. 
much more, so much stronger than I'll ever be probably in the Arabic language and being able to get to those, go deep into those certain books and things like this. But his Tawheed, where is his, his Ifrad Allah Ibadah? Where is his, his knowledge of who his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, without any uh, doubting of his Lord, his Lord's statements, especially regarding the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his following of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where is it? And that's because of the naqs of Tawheed, the lack of knowledge and the lack of concern, in fact, taking your intellect. And even today, sorry to get off on a tangent, but it reminds me even, it was today or yesterday, and in fact, it was yesterday, the other individual I mentioned, said to me, he said, you know, certain things, they're just wrong. And he said, I just go by the heart. He said, if it feels good, then I, I believe it, basically. You know, so he was belittling so much of the Sharia because of his desires. So you saw where the pure deception of the shaitan and ignorance encompassed him about Tawheed. And about the importance of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qala Allah wa qala Rasul. That usul is not there. And that's why you see the importance of this text. And the importance of this first asl min usul is very important and very beneficial. And we'll try to get through it. But we're going to detail some things. And he said, he also said regarding this, around this first uh, section of the treaties that Muhammad ibn of the Wahhab said. He said, for, for He said the Quran, all of it is Tawheed. From the, from the first of it to the last of it. Either the ayats are calling to single out Allah alone, the Almighty, in worship, or they are clarifying the reward for the one who is a monotheist, Ahlul Tawheed, in the dunya and in the hereafter. And also how Allah will give status and takreem and his generosity and, and, and gives them greatness for the one who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this is in the dunya and of course in the akhirah. And then he says, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may test them, meaning testing Ahl Tawheed. And for if they pass that test, the Quran also mentions what they, the reward they will gain in the hereafter for passing the test. And also it mentions the reward or the ending and the punishment for those who remain ignorant and flee from learning Tawheed and stay away from learning Tawheed and ignore learning from Tawheed and give no importance to Tawheed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this uh, all throughout the Quran. So here the Shaykh is basically saying, Shaykh Muhammad Ibn, uh, Shaykh uh, Muhammad Ibn Jami, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of that first asal, that first foundation, is that so many people, even people who have some knowledge in certain aspects of the religion, they may be well grounded in fiqh, well grounded in hadith even, well grounded in certain things, but they belittle tawheed. And they go astray in tawheed and they don't give tawheed its importance. And some of the people to such an extent that they uh, either they leave the deen because of the kufra that they have and that the one who uh, is totally uh, away from Tawheed, they, they stay far from Tawheed, then this person, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about them that they will have a severe torment in the hereafter. And so this shows us the importance of Habatif Allah never be shy about studying Tawheed and never feel hesitant about studying another book of Tawheed and even a book that you've studied many times 
and as I was listening to a faida, a great benefit in listening to uh, Sheikh, uh, our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, his explanation of uh, one of his explanations of Kitab al Tawheed. And in the beginning, he mentioned this very fact. He said the ulama, they don't tire of, you know, how many times have great imams in our time and in the past, of course, they taught basic books over and over and over again. They memorize them, they read them, they revise them, and they teach them over and over and over again because of their importance. The importance for the people and the importance for them to keep them grounded. So it isn't just that, oh yeah, I studied Kitab al that's enough. One time. But rather, to continually to refresh yourself. Doesn't mean you have to get into every dars, but at least refresh yourself by revising. Revising and understanding those ayat and those ahadith which talk about the importance of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and the importance of uh, of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those hadith and athar of the salaf which mention tawheed and, and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to exalt Allah and how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Allama Zaid ibn Muhammad al Madkhali rahmatullahi rahmatullahi wa said about this first usul and in general about the treaties. He said these six principles are connected to the creed of a Salafiya and the Salafi minhaj. The first of them is the first principle making the religion sincerely for Allah the mighty and majestic. And this means to direct all acts of worship, whether they are related to one's wealth or physical body, or to both the wealth and the physical body together, to Allah the mighty and majestic, upon the path of sincerity, ikhlas, and singling out Allah alone without any partners. Since Allah the mighty, and majestic is the one who is singled out with the ability to create, manage, and have unrestricted disposal over the universe without any associate or helper. He is the one whom it is obligatory to single out with worship alone, to the exclusion of anyone else, without any rival or any equal or any peer or any helper. Therefore, it is obligatory for the ikhlas, the sincerity, to occur in all of the actions. And, it is, uh, and its foundation is the Tawheed of Allah with all of its three categories and remaining innocent from whatever opposes Tawheed, meaning be, being free from anything that opposes Tawheed. That is shirk with Allah, the mighty and majestic, regardless of whether it is the major shirk or minor shirk. And it is known from the sharia and the intellect that everything has a reason. Then he went on to say, So the reason for understanding Tawheed is that it will bring about concern for fiqh, understanding of the religion, and encourage one to sit in the circles of knowledge, which give importance to explaining the principles and solid foundations of the religion. Likewise is the case with fiqh of the acts of worship, interactions, and the rest of the affairs of the halal and the haram, and manners, and dealings, and character, other than that from whatever has been covered completely in the book of our Lord, how majestic is his affair, and the authentic sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here the Shaykh is mentioning that the knowledge of Tawheed is the foundation. And that's why we have uh, this ikhlas. And that's why uh, Imam Muhammad uh, mentioned that as the first usul, because that is the usul of the religion. And as we mentioned prior to this, that the religion is built upon two conditions for having one's uh, ibadah accepted. One's worship is accepted in accordance if they meet these two conditions. The first condition being ikhlas lillah, and that's why we're talking about this, meaning that you single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship alone 
with any and all acts of worship. So when you pray, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second condition is being mutada, meaning that it follows the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And that, that means all of our things from our salat, our zakat, our sadaqah, our hajj, our umrah, our som, you know, our fasting. All of that is on the scale of those two conditions. In order to have those great acts of worship, which we want to have uh, rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order for that to be the case, they have to meet those two conditions. You have to do the act of worship only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi sabilillah. And it has to be done how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it, as long as it's an action which is restricted by the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like those primary core acts of ibadah. The, 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 the pillars of Islam, they're restricted, they have conditions, they have uh, uh, um, criterion, all of those things, wajibat, uh, mustahabat, they have things that are recommended, things that are oblig obligation to do in your prayer, in your fasting, in your zakat. And so all of these acts of worship are restricted by the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Then the Shaykh went on to mention what's very important for us, and that is the categories of shirk. The categories of shirk. And so he mentioned, first, he said, so shirk with Allah, the blessed and exalted, is of two categories. Major shirk, which nullifies the action and takes one out of the religion, and minor shirk, which does not take one out of the religion, nor does it nullify the action. So here the Sheikh mentioned what is very important for us to understand and gain from this treatise and gain from this uh, portion of the treatise to understand that shirk in general has how many categories? Two. Two primary categories that we're concerned about. The major shirk and the minor shirk. And the major shirk does what? It takes you out of the fold of Islam and it negates all of the actions you did if you, uh, prior to that act of shirk, if you died upon that, if you didn't make toba for the shirk, uh, you know, or you did the shirk by accident, whatever the case may be. Uh, and the minor shirk, which does not take one out of the religion, and he said, nor does it nullify the action. Then he says, as for the major shirk, then it is the one whose affair Allah spoke about. And he said, he mentioned the ayat that we mentioned, in Allah, Indeed, Allah does not forgive that others be, asso uh, be associated with him, but he forgives whatever is below that, or whatever is other than that, for whomsoever he wills. And that's in Surah An-Nisa, verse 48. And then he said, the general rule concerning major shirk is that when the servant directs something from amongst the acts of worship to other than Allah, the mighty and majestic, or when he directs it to Allah and to other than Allah along with him, whether it be a supplication, a dua, or seeking aid, isti'ana, as we talked about, or seeking rescue or salvation, istighatha, or sacrificing, a dhubh, or taking an oath, another, or hope, having raja, or reliance, tawakkul, or fear, khauf, or other than that from the various types of worship, then whosoever directs something from that to other than Allah, then he, he is a mushrik, kafir, disbeliever, after the evidence from the revelation has been established upon him. So the sheikh mentioned in the beginning of that, what did he say? So it's very important to show and distinguish our minhaj from the minhaj of the tekfiris. He mentioned and he qualified it very openly. And he said, and the general rule, and what does this go back to, Ahabita Fillah? It goes back to the conditions of tekfir. And it goes back to the principles of tekfir. And it goes back to the types of tekfir. Tekfir mutlaq wa tekfir al-ma'ayyam. Takfir mutlaq means a general takfir, meaning whoever does such and such, 
then they are disbeliever. This is a, a general rule of tekfir. But before you implement that on a specific individual, which is called tekfir al ma'ayyan, which is on a specific person, then there must there are certain conditions that must be met, and the evidence must be presented to that individual that what they did, this act or this statement, was a statement of disbelief. So this is very important, and this is the religion of Islam, and this distinguishes Ahlul Sunnah from Ahlul Bid'ah, like the Takfir Khawarij, uh, Mubtadi'a, like ISIS and Daesh and uh, Boko Haram, and all of these other wicked groups, Hizb Tahrir, uh, all these other groups that make Takfir without the principles for Takfir, and without looking at the mawana of takfir, and based on often their own desires and great evil and spreading evil and fitna around the earth. Then the sheikh said, and he said, and the minor shirk is that which is below major shirk. It is a danger for the ummah. It is the second level after major shirk and after it come misguided innovations and after them come the major sins and then the minor sins. So here he gave you the maratib, give you the different levels. He said, this is the arrangement of the acts of disobedience. So all of that is disobedience, whether it be minor sins or major sins, whether it be minor shirk or major shirk, or whether it be bidah, and they fall in different levels. They have different levels. And then he said, so minor shirk has numerous manifestations. From them is behaving with a riya. Wa'iyadhan billah. Min dhalika ala humma inni a'udhu bika na ushrika bika wa ana ala mustaq faruqa lima la alamu. He says a riya, which is showing off. He said, so a riya is when the Muslim servant sets out to do an action for Allah the Mighty and Majestic. Then he embellishes that action. Because the people are looking at him. So that they will praise him and commend him. And this is an evil objective because he has entered into a matter from amongst the matters of minor shirk. And that is a riya. So the obligation is to wage war against this type of shirk. Fight against it. Fight against your nafs. Fight against... It's going to happen. You're going to start beautifying your prayer. Someone's looking at you. You're going to start doing this or doing that or beautifying your lecture or whatever the case may be, whatever situation of ibadah, it is, it's a natural inclination to show off. It's natural, I'm saying, that the shaitan, and, and more so because the shaitan is going to work on you. But guess what? Since it's natural, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us beautiful ways of dealing with that and gives us excuses. It makes, makes it, uh, gives us forgiveness. And gives us a pre pre prescription for that. The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dua, certain dua that we can do to come back. Yeah, I was just showing off. Let me, let me straighten that. That's the beauty of Islam. So never be too soft on yourself and never be too hard on yourself. Because what I notice from a lot of the youth is they don't understand these things. They don't understand anything about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, we need to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some of the people are so strict and so, uh, because they don't have fiqh fi deen. They don't have understanding of the religion and knowing more about their Lord and that their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, al-Tawab ar-Rahim. He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servants and he is merciful to his servants and he accepts the repentance of his servants. And that you can come back to him. And that not everything is so shadeed that you just read it in a book and then your whole dunya is destroyed. No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy. And you just have to know to come back to him. And when you see yourself falling into a sin and you see yourself showing off, straighten it up immediately. Try to clean that up right now and get back on track. Because the shaitan wants you to stop the act of worship. And the ulama, they spend, Ibn Rajib speaks about this in his explanation of Arba'in and Nawawi in the hadith, in the ma'amal bin niyat, verily actions are by the intentions. Okay? And he speaks about this, the levels, how riba, uh, 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 riya, how this minor shirk creeps into the ibadah of the servant. And how the servant 
should fight that. And it is a greater sin to stop. For example, let's give an example So, because I'm rambling and I want this to be clear. An example would be the student of knowledge giving a lecture. The imam giving a khutbah. He's given a khutbah and the people seem amazed by him. So he begins to beautify it even more. You know, he's feeling it. He likes that amazement a little bit. So then it's on that imam when he recognizes that to then internally purify his intention. But not to stop beautifying that speech for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, but just purify it so it is not for the sake of the people. So it is for the sake of delivering that message in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to guide the people to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is very important that, yeah, it's going to come to you. And it runs through your blood. But you can deal with that. Deal with that by correcting your intention. And... There are certain supplications, and he's going to get into some of those supplications very shortly. And then he says, so the obligation is to wage war against this type of shirk. And that is done by directing all of the acts of worship to Allah, the mighty and majestic, and by distancing, self, uh, distancing oneself from the vile objectives. Don't call to call to yourself. Don't call to call to your sect. Don't call to call to your clique. Don't call to, to call to your his to your hisb and your hisbiyah. Oh, our our group is 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 the only ones we own the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. We own Dawah to Salafiyah. We the Salafis. We this. We that. No. Call to the Book of Allah. Call to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make his takfar. Allah will raise you up if you're worthy of being raised. Allah will give you those benefits. And so that is the difficult thing for all of us to remember and all of us to get ourselves back on track. We need to wage war against this shirk. And so he said, by distancing oneself from vile objectives, such as when one desires that the people praise and commend him, and whatever resembles that from whatever enters into worship. So this type of shirk has taken overtaken many of the people who have fallen into it. Due to this, there has come an ather from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directing towards a dhikr, a remembrance, by which the servant will be able to fortify himself against the destruction of this type of riyah. And it is his, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, saying, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from committing shirk and with you whilst I know and I seek re your forgiveness for that which I do not know. And this is uh, Sahih, uh, related by Ibn Abi Shaiba in his book Al Musannaf, Al Haythami, and Mu' and Majmu' Majmu' Al Zawaid, Abu Ya'la in Musnad, and Al Bukhari in Adab Al Mufrid. Uh, and so it's mentioned in those books. And it's an authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning it's an authentic supplication of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is so important. So that means when before your acts of worship, even perhaps during your act of worship, say the supplication. Get, get back on track and ask Allah for forgiveness. The supplication is as follows. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa sa'afruka lima la'alamu. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from committing shirk with you. With something that I know and I seek your forgiveness for that which you only you know. Because there's some acts, sometimes you know you're showing off, you're doing it to be heard. You want to, you know, whatever the your, your affair of the dunya that you're trying to achieve, you're aware of that. And you, you might show off for that reason in your ibadah. And then there are those actions which you may not realize sometimes that you're showing off. So this covers both of those actions and shows the, the shamulia of the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, how beautiful it is, how encompassing it is. It's encompassing all those abwab of shirk. You know, it's trying to cut off that shirk 
that 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 that's that's seeking uh, fame and to be heard. And even the major sheriff doing it solely to please the people or doing it to worship the people, whatever the case may be. And in the next sitting, we're going to go into detail. We're going to mention a, a very uh, alim hadith, a very beautiful hadith of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is so powerful. And I remember once I related this to one in the gathering of the company of some of my brothers and a man who I know as a strong warrior physically. And we have, you know, known each other for 20 years plus, strove together, been in all kind of battles together more or less, all kind of things we've traveled together, we've ate together, we've slept in the same places, in cars together, in masjids together, everything. And I saw him shed a tear when I mentioned this hadith once to see, you know, it was that, it was that athar taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in him and forgive us in him and guide us in him. May Allah bless us all with ikhlas, with the battle of sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi, rizq al-tayyib, wa amal al-muttaqabil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this dars to be on our scale of hasanat and not on our scale of sayyat for having shirk in it or misguidance and error in bid'ah. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.